All right, let's look at the alveolar fracture. This injury is when an injury causes a fracture of the alveolar process. Keep in mind that we are talking about the maxilla or mandible. Uh, the supporting bone around the teeth is part of the alveolar process. One of the keys to identifying this type of injury is that several teeth will typically move as a unit when you check for mobility. Expect to see that the patient's bite does not come together as it should, and the patient should be able to recognize this as well. With alveolar fractures, it is possible that the teeth that are involved in the fracture may have other dental trauma injuries on top of the alveolar fracture. So I think I mentioned this before, but if not, this would be a good time. Uh, when you have multiple types of dental trauma injuries on several teeth, you will need to diagnose all of the injuries and treat each individual injury accordingly. As we have discussed in many of these injuries already, you may have noticed that there are some similar treatment options for the various injuries. My advice would be to diagnose first and then look at this guide for each individual injuries and make a list of steps that you will do as part of your treatment to address all those injuries. When you have injury treatment options that overlap with different injuries within the same patient, just assume that one treatment will address multiple injuries. As always, pulp test the teeth involved and document the response to cold. We do this every time. For radiographs, an occlusal and two periapical exposures are indicated from the mesial and distal direction. When an alveolar injury is suspected, a panoramic or cone beam can be useful as well. An alveolar fracture involves vertical fractures and a horizontal fracture. To treat an alveolar fracture, reposition using finger pressure labially and lingually to reposition the displaced segment. Once you think it is in proper position, verify this position with a radiograph. Once position is confirmed, apply a flexible splint for up to four weeks. You can find the patient instructions and follow-up recommendations in the Dental Trauma Guide.